There's a proverb that says, behind every successful man is a great woman. And that's true in the case of SpaceX. Elon Musk may be the most mentioned face every time SpaceX breaks a new record or when Starship takes a leap forward on its journey. But he has a wonder weapon to create those miracles. Can you guess who? Yeah, it's Gwynny Shotwell, the president and chief operating officer of SpaceX. Not only did she help the company thrive, but the huge progress Starship made in IFT2 was also partly due to her contributions. So let's learn everything about this amazing woman and what she has been doing to build SpaceX. It is nowadays in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Gwyn Shotwell serves as President and Chief Operating Officer for SpaceX, and she is responsible for day-to-day -day operations including production, launch, sales, mission management, and finance, as well as managing all customer and strategic relations to support the company. In short, she's in charge of selling rockets and dealing with Elon Musk. Unlike a lot of other SpaceX employees who grew up fascinated by rockets, she wasn't. Born in Chicago, she is the child of an artist and a brain surgeon. Per her mother, she wanted her to become an engineer, but Shotwell thought those people just drove trains, so to help her daughter understand what they do, her mother took her to a Society of Women Engineers event. For the first time, she met female engineers, and the beautiful suits they wore fascinated her so much that she wanted to one day become a mechanical engineer like them. Her educational journey started with Northwestern, where Shotwell studied mechanical engineering with a minor in economics, as well as a master's degree in applied mathematics. Her original plan was to work in the auto industry and began working for the Chrysler Corporation in engine research, a job she initially enjoyed but later found tiring with its many levels of highs of approvals and rules, limiting productivity and innovation. She then moved to Aerospace Corps for 10 years to learn the business of defense contractors, where she was a thermal engineer and project manager. However, one more time she asked the question about the meaning of work as the hands-on experience here could not keep up with her expectations, she felt like she was just suffering papers. To get more hands-on experience building and designing rockets, she moved to Microcosm, a small space startup whose mission was to design and build low-cost rockets and parts. In a typical environment like a startup company where you have the opportunity to learn many things, experience a lot of practice and maximize your creativity, Shotwell learned possibly the most important lessons that would benefit her later at SpaceX. On the fly, she learned about business development, including management skills, and how to sell aerospace products to the government and large companies. With her talent and efforts, she is widely known as the best saleswoman. Parallel to this, Elon Musk was in the early stages of developing SpaceX, a revolutionary and potential company in the aerospace industry. Like lots of other founders who hire adult supervision when their companies start to grow, SpaceX's founder needed a business development talent who knew what they were doing as an engineer. Through a meeting at a fateful party, Elon truly found treasure, and then he convinced Shotwell successfully to become the employee number seven in his young company, SpaceX. Over 20 years, working under a boss who constantly made ambitious goals and timelines, while many gave up, Shotwell's talent has the opportunity to shine brightly. Perhaps regarding the rapid development of Starship, which is shown clearly through its second orbital test flight on November 18, most people suppose that it is based on technical development. To be honest, we cannot ignore another important factor, which is finances. Without the financial fundamentals, they will be limited in installing and testing new upgrades on Starship and its ground-based systems such as hot staging new design on some part of Raptor or water deluge system. It's safe to say that rocketry is a game dedicated to the rich. Begun in 2012, Musk estimated that the Starship program would cost between $5 billion and $10 billion to develop. This year alone, SpaceX planned to pump some $2 billion into a rocket system. You should forget or should not forget that SpaceX lost $968 million in 2021 and $559 million in 2022. 
the company just earned a tiny profit of $55 million in quarter 1, 2023. It is no doubt that Starship has made a large hole in the company's budget. Of course, even though he is the richest person in the world, Mr. Musk cannot pay Starship's expensive bills alone. So, as the president and bestseller, what did Gwyn Shotwell do to make SpaceX last and grow dramatically for more than 20 years? To answer the question, let's dive into how SpaceX generates revenue. You know, a commercial private company cannot remove business operations. SpaceX's main technology is rocketry, and Gwyn is building profitable businesses around this technology to support longer-term projects. In the business area, it's called by the term residual capability. A few great examples of residual capability as SpaceX's Game Changer exist. The first is doing business on Starlink, their satellite internet network. Elon Musk probably hadn't thought about providing internet service from space at all when started SpaceX. The internet was cool, but it didn't involve anything to Mars. That was only true before Gwyn created SpaceX's financial plan. By creating and launching their satellites, SpaceX could create a sustainable business here on Earth and help build technology that will be needed on Mars. Currently, as of early 2023, of all the satellites in operation, approximately 46%, 51% are Starlink, and this percentage is increasing. These have created a huge source of revenue. SpaceX's Starlink satellite connectivity unit is now breaking even according to Elon's post on X. According to unnamed people familiar with the matter, Starlink sales are expected to outpace and exceed the launch business next year. For next year, Starlink will account for more than $10 billion of total sales, representing the majority of SpaceX revenue. A tender offer at SpaceX earlier this year valued the company at about $150 billion. Leaked reports suggest Starlink posted $1.4 billion in revenue for 2022, up from $222 million the year before. Musk had previously predicted Starlink would make $12 billion and $7 billion in operating profit in 2022, having gained 20 million subscribers. As well as selling directly to consumers, Starlink has signed dozens of enterprise customers as well as wholesale agreements with telcos and resellers. The company has signed deals with some maritime and aviation customers and has formed direct-to-sell agreements with a number of telcos globally. Secondly, SpaceX earns money from the rocket launch service under commercial contracts with national organizations like NASA, private companies, and individuals. An interesting thing is that when Shotwell was a new member of SpaceX, she soon became the head of business development and was immediately assigned an unbelievable task by her boss selling some rockets that did not exist and had not flown before, of course. Sounds weird, right? Yes, it's time to pull the old strings. She began meeting with the United States government agencies and satellite companies to begin to persuade them to book launches on their still unflown Falcon 1 rocket. Somehow, the then young unicorn SpaceX landed its first contracts with agencies such as the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency a Malaysian satellite startup and above all with a large national organization, NASA not to mention a dozen Falcon 1 flights to other clients, all this happened before it every reaching orbit. The long-term close cooperation between SpaceX and NASA marked with a $278 million contract in 2006 requiring Elon Musk's company to develop Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon space capsule that would ferry supplies to the ISS. This also led to more lucrative contracts. Most notably, in 2021, the space agency signed a contract under the Artemis program with SpaceX to develop and manufacture Starship HLS and to conduct two flights, an uncrewed demonstration mission and a crewed lunar landing. Building a good relationship with an aerospace tycoon like NASA not only brings economic benefits, but also enhances the company's reputation day by day. It's one of the most efficient ways for SpaceX to market its products worldwide without spending a lot of money on advertising. And by generating extensive revenue for the company, Shotwell was taking on more of a leadership role in the company. Now she is president and chief operating officer at SpaceX, as well as Elon's intimate friend. Without her, it's so hard for SpaceX to be like today. While Elon Musk devotes his time and effort to other businesses outside of rockets, 
he really needs someone who can keep things organized and ensure cash flows in a positive trend. While Elon is so risky and he just loves to throw it all in one thing and leaves little margin for error like the way he rolled his dice when started SpaceX, he also needs someone who has a healthy balance. Fortunately, all of those are found in Gwyn Shotwell. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.